Imagine you are a manager. Let's say of an ice cream development business. So your job is to look for new investment opportunities like new flavors, new freezing technologies, expanding your existing production. Then to search for how to fund this investment project and control their development and finally to enjoy the prosperity and the growth of your business. On the downside, some projects can, not, can turn out to be not so successful as you have hoped. The worst thing that can happen is the end of the company. This talk is not about how to find the attractive opportunities or how to manage them, but how to fund them uh, while avoiding the worst case scenario of closing operations. And even though I will use uh, an example of ice cream production today, my re uh, research results can be applied to any manufacturing or service offering company from a barber shop to multinational cup producer. So, you are a manager of an ice cream company and you decide to open a new production line of sorbet. There are numerous ways to fund this project. Um, however, primarily, the manager needs to choose between two main options, to borrow money or to sell an ownership share in the enterprise. If uh, he borrows money, then he receives funds and obligation to pay back in a certain period of time. No one interferes into his business decisions. No one provides any guidelines for business strategies. So professionally, he is independent. However, if under this independent management, the company fails to pay back the promised amount of money, then company defaults and uh, we as a manager have to try our best to compensate investors. How? By liquidating the company, by selling the equipment, the stocks of ice cream, the patents, and distributing the gains from that to investors. That's a nightmare for the manager. An alternative is to sell an ownership share uh, in the company. This will allow the new investor to in, uh, interfere into your business decisions. And not even um, in the current moment, but also in the future, because even after the project has been finished, the shareholder keeps his ownership share in the company. While ideally you would prefer to decide about the future of the company solely on your own. On the other hand, if uh, the project does not happen to be very profitable, then the stock price will reflect it and the investor will be worse off, but the company will be still functioning. You can also use the mix of these two sources of financing and this will describe the capital structure of a company. The dilemma of how to find the ideal proportion for your company is the classical problem in financial research. Uh, there are numerous papers selling, uh, saying which type of firms prefer which types of financing. Empirically, we see that the decision will depend on how big the company is and how profitable it is and which part of it is presented as machinery or in uh, intangible things like patents, technologies, and so on. It is all important. However, the problem with classic research is that the firm there is presented as an isolated item, as if it was trading in the market alone, which is obviously not true in reality. As an ice cream producer, we interact with, uh, uh, with our suppliers for, from whom we buy uh, milk, sugar, eggs, and so on and then we sell our output to supermarkets, restaurants, and so on. And my question is whether there is a link between these trading connections and our capital structure decision. And if there, there exists one, then what is the cause and what is the consequence? So my result says that the more suppliers and customers a company has, the more confident it is to take on more debt. 
Um, let's say my uh, fellow manager Catherine from a toy producing industry has a comparable number of customers, toy shops, but she has much more suppliers. Uh, she needs for production, uh, she needs uh, plush and other fabrics, wood, plastic, glass, um, um, what else, rubber, um, clockwork mechanisms. So this will be six suppliers against my two, um, dairy uh, products and sugar. And um, the more partners interact with her business, the more people there will be who do not want her to default, and the more support she will feel to uh, take on more debt. But by this, she will uh, increase the probability of uh, defaulting. Another finding of mine is that um, there is a positive dependence between partner industries. So my ice cream factory always negotiates the price uh, at which it buys sugar from, uh, from my supplier. And uh, uh, of course, every side wants uh, a more favorable price for her. So I want a lower one. Uh, the sugar uh, company manager prefers to sell it at a higher price. So uh, and at the same time, either of us can have some debt and this means have some probability to default. And the worst economic conditions means that the probability of default increases. Naturally, if one, if one of us defaults, this will increase uh, the probability of default. This will worsen the economic conditions for the other party. And this can be used as a tool to threaten the partner. If my terms are not accepted, then I can default and then I will take part of your profits with me. So this means that capital structure is a tool to increase the bargaining power when you negotiate with your uh, business partners. One more form of interaction between companies can be an acquisition of one company by another. Uh, for some reason, I can decide that I don't want to buy milk anymore from outside producer, but I want to produce it myself within uh, my business unit. And I can either start this business from scratch or acquire the existing milk firm. Um, from business point of view, this is an investment project. How can I understand that I'm ready for that? And how should I finance that? So my research results says that um, the firms with lower debt tend to participate in acquisition activities much more. It means that I will wait till my company pays back all the existing debt first before I start negotiating uh, with the milk farm. And then after uh, I announce about the deal, I will feel more flexible to, uh, to, uh, uh, to borrow new uh, money for this acquisition. So as we have seen today, firms tend to take more debt if they have more business uh, partners. They tend to have uh, more debt if their business partners take more debt. And uh, if firms participate in an acquisition, they uh, want to uh, pay back the existing debt first, and then they uh, feel more flexible to take new debts on. Uh, those are at least three examples how capital structure is um, an indicator of financial health of a company and a tool to manipulate the decisions of our business partners. And this all on top of the essential role of it uh, in an investment process. Thank you very much.